yes, we had the Corky get a solo kill on the LeBlanc, which shouldn't necessarily happen, but prioritizing uh, Jazuki's mid lane and then get him kind of rolling is also really important for them to, for their winning potential. But Giants, you know, getting the wall look very strong to them. So your position's tilting me slightly, so I'm just going to oh, move okay. you slightly off towards this. No worries. Um, so yeah, pick and ban. Straight away we're starting this game. Production thanked me as yeah. well. So, oh, really? so, yeah. You were Got just sitting straight close. in the middle of the screen. That's true. You, yeah. you don't want to see the nice logo, I guess. No, you do. Uh, okay, so Giants and Paris Saint-Germain taking on the second game of the series. We're coming ban straight away from Giants, and it's Zach taken away by PSG. No big surprises here. Zach, you got a ban first rotation. Rakan, I think, is going to be more or less a permanent ban. Yeah. There's no way Ooh. you let that one through. Just the playmaking potential on it is just way too big. And Giants, jungle yeah, ban. Uh, Rek'Sai ban. That's not something we commonly see. Kaime obviously was a very good Rek'Sai player when she was a more meta. And she hasn't really worked out too well recently, although the Unicorns of Love did bring her out in their series versus uh, G2. Now, at least ban as well from Paris Saint-Germain. So we are going to see a lot of jungle focus. Last game, we had the Karzix and the Gragas be picked up in the jungle. They're still both on the cards. But uh, probably going to see some early prioritization from these two teams towards that jungle role. Yep, Rakan and Zach consistently being 100% pick ban right now. And again, jungle bans just kind of float on through. I mean, taking away the Elise is going to be pretty good, big against Gilius. He showed what he can kind of do on that last week. Two more bands follow through, though. Yeah, it's the Thresh and the Kha'Zix, and uh, what a surprise! Caitlyn pick first up for Giants. It was going to happen. If Caitlyn's available, they're going to first pick it. Now, do PSG take the Braum here is the kind of massive question. Taking away the Thresh is quite interesting, mm -hmm. just because they kind of remove that playmaker potential in the bottom lane. Honestly, just going on Jack Troll's performance, I'd kind of take the Braum away here. You take the bottom lane here, absolutely, or you take the bottom and jungle, or you take the AD carry in jungle. You can take jungle next rotation and get the counter. Yeah, so okay. yeah, Varus Braum makes a lot of sense, as you say. Um, however, with Jack Troll having played so much Braum, he probably knows a counter to it. Gilius can get his lease in here if he wants it. In fact, it's going to be... Oh, I thought it was locked in there. The picking logo went for longer than I thought it would. But there is the lock. And now support for Giants as well. Tom Kench is very strong. Yeah, Tom Kench, absolutely massive priority at the moment as well for a lot of teams. Enables your Eddie Carrier to play very safely in the lane and also in the team fights as well. But the problem is with Tom Kench, it's what always said, is it can end up in a two for one situation rather than a one for one if you do, do, do devour your AD carry or someone else and then get delivered to the enemy team. Okay, well, cool. We're doing well with predictions thus far, Jules. Let's oh, go yes. for the next one. PSG pick up their jungler here. I'm going to go pick up Oleana. Oh, Rengar. Wow. Rengar. Well, it makes a lot of sense because uh, you've okay. still got both mid laners open, so. Very true. I mean, Blunk's precision on the Oriana is Honestly, quite a spectacle. Like I mentioned earlier, his control mage matchups and just um, his ability to control the mid wave is just absolutely spectacular. Getting him on a priority mid laner is extremely important, but saving it for the next round of draft is fairly understandable. We have Kira once again. Well. Yeah, very true. You have the, the counter pick as well. Kira once again picking up that Rengar. That's the third time he's played Rengar yeah. thus far. Shouldn't have gone for the Olaf guess. Should have gone for the Rengar guess. <laughs> yeah. A mistake for me. Fiora could be banned out here alongside Kennen, still available. Uh, Shen as well, if either of these teams want to get rid of that. Gragas, probably going to be picked somewhere in the next little bit of the draft. It's going to be a Jace ban from Giants. Wasn't even picked or banned in the first game, but last week was 100% amongst the Challenger Series teams. I expect a Fiora ban, probably, from Giants, although White Knight isn't known for his Fiora play. No, definitely not. And I think he really does suit the supportive style, in all honesty. His Shen play is very, very good. And even sustaining against the Nars fairly easy when you get a couple of items underneath your belt. So banning away the Jace here isn't so big. And I don't think you ban Fiora at all. I think you ban or Yeah, okay. So you ban away the mid lane here Easy again. to say when it's locked yeah, in. I, I easy, said it, it locked in? Easy. <laughs> yeah. But okay, so Oriana here is going to be, I think, pick ban, honestly, against Blunk. Yeah. There's, there's no way you kind of let him have that. Azir is still there. I really want to see it, but I doubt he's going to pick it, especially into this kind of composition they do have. Although, very good seizure with the Azir, but Corky is left open, so that will be the lock-in instead. I think PSG right now are going, your picks, our picks now. Well, it's basically exactly the same composition as last time, apart from the Braum. And I mean, the Rengar plays a very different role to, to well, relatively similar role, actually, to the Karzik, so it's uh, not too surprising from them. It's going to be an Echo lock-in. Uh, for Jazuki, you would expect in that middle lane. That's a very strong pick, not something we commonly see, but can dash around, of course, the Phosphorus bomb from the Corky. Yeah, so the matchup in the mid lane is 
it's going to be more of a sustain war. Echo is just so... So quite, he's kind of frustrating to play into with a time winder because it's got a very slow, it's got a very slow cooldown in um, in comparison to some other Q abilities like Ari's Orb of Deception, for example. But the wind up for it to come in and come out, it just halves the cooldown. You're just kind yeah. of waiting for it to come back, and you know the enemy laner still has to kind of play around it in that instance. Can't step up to the wave at any one point. It can be very very easy to kind of clear and uh, just make sure the Corgi can't get any sneaky roams off. Although we didn't see Blank do that anyway. But top laners are getting locked in as well. This is known as a bad matchup for the Shen as well. Like, Rumble into Shen, you're always going to get pushed in. I'm really surprised to see PSG leave the top lane counter pick for last and then go for something they would have picked early on anyway. So it's a, a little bit of a disappointing draft from them. Giants have got the Rumble up towards the top side. They look to have a lot of burst damage and then the safety with that Caitlyn later on into the game. Whereas Paris Saint-Germain, very similar to last game. Good siege, good dive as well, but they weren't really able to use this composition to its full effectiveness last time. I'm actually happy we're seeing Jatron on a different champion, in all honesty. This Tom Kench is going to play a similar role to the Braum. Very, very heavy protection. He's got a lot of sustainability and survival uh, yeah. in the laning phase. The problem is Braum very, very strong against melee laners or melee supports. Um, but I think the matchup to watch, in all honesty, is going to be the mid lane again. Just because Corky into the Echo. If the Corky gets ahead, it's going to be very punishing for the Echo. He can't roam. There's no way, even even with his mobility, with his um, with his E and just his wave clear, is going to be there. But the problem is, if the Echo gets ahead, it's going to be the complete opposite. And we yeah. said that last game though, and Blunk still found a solo kill on Suzuki. I think skill wise, they're both very evenly matched in that regard. And Blunk sticking with the Corky, I don't think is a bad thing whatsoever. Again, if they can execute what they tried to do last game, which was the sieging Varus with the Corky, it's going to be very easy for them. But there's also a lot of wave clear on PSG's side as well. Uh, sorry, on Giant's side as well. They do have the Echo. The time wind is yep. very easy. But again, he's going to be one of split pushing. Not a bad split pusher whatsoever. Can build Lich Bane. It's a lot of turret taken potential from both sides. A lot of teams right now just focusing on that 1-3-1 or the 1-4. And that's exactly what they're going for. But yeah. let's look at the top lane. Okay. Shen and Rumble. Mm -hmm. Very, very, very bad for Shen. Yeah, especially and they the into game. it, which yeah. is what disappoints me. Yeah, exactly. But the one thing Shen does have, and we saw it last game, was he can get pushed in for days, but he can still be there for um, for a Stan United. Rumble hasn't got any way to interrupt that, which that's the true. NAR did have. That's true. So White Knight in that sense is a little bit more safe. But the Rumble can obviously chunk him out a fair bit as well. Well, we are on to the Summoner Swift for the second game of this series. It's Paris Saint-Germain taking on Giants. Giants looking for a 2-0 clean sweep in their first two weeks, whereas Paris Saint-Germain still searching for their first win. Trying to search for that elusive first win. Now, Kire has played the Rengar three times now. Can he make it work in this game? That's kind of the overarching question. Yeah. Rengar, like you said, is going to play a little bit differently from last game. It's still relatively Kazakhs. similar to the Kha'Zix. Yeah, absolutely. Small invade, oh. though. Braum, very good at level 1 invades. Doxiak, how's it going? Oh, does Ooh. land. Gilius? It's all right, Tongue Lash. Yeah, I don't think that deserved uh, any of the whoops I gave it. <laughs> whoop, whoop. Still got a few whoops. Gilius can actually just back away here as well because it's so early he'll be able to back and still get in... Uh, back into his jungle in time. So we'll just do that. Jack Jolly Mini Troopax just going to step forward. It actually looks like it's going to be a razor beak start. We'll, we'll be spotted out, but White Knight is uh, up on a ward there as well, which Ruin went into place. So both junglers will be tracked at the start of their clear. So with the first clear coming out for the Rengar, it's actually going to be very easy for him because Corky has a very, very good AoE. Phosphorus Bomb, which is going to tend to start regardless. Well, you can start the Gatling Gun, which actually a lot of people do do to kind of get the Thunderlord's proc off, but he's going to have a very... He's going to help Kirei a fair bit, and Rengar's... Didn't actually give him any assistance. What? Blanc didn't give uh, Koei any assistance. Oh, okay. The Razor Beak Completely missed that. Stayed so in the mid lane. White Knight was actually there to give him a bit of a hand. Oh, a bit of helping hand. All right. Green mid lane, I understand. But Kirei, you know, he's, gonna, he's on this Rengar. He's going to want to farm. Lee Sin's going to want to make ganks early. That's kind of the... That's how it works. Rengar... Hits level six, delete somebody. Gilius, not so much. He's got a lot of gap closes where Kirei doesn't if there's not a brush around. Will we see Kirei once again force Ruin to blow his flash early and then make a return gank? Ruin it doesn't have the mobility and doesn't have the escape tools like the Nar does. So in that regard, it's going to be very easy for him. And Oh, Blunt. Yeah, aggressive trades from both of them in the mid lane. Jazuki down to about 200 HP, has the corrupting potion stacks, but so does Blunt this time. 
instead of going for the Doran Shield that he used against uh, Jizuki last turn. So what you want to do, you know Jizuki's going to want to trade into you, so you take the Corrupting Potion, and he, Time White is into you, just uses everything he's got. You stand there, you Gatling gun him, just keep auto attacking. Blunt, Holy though. moly, Blunk has to use heal. That is massive. That is absolutely humongous in the mid lane. That's without Doran's ring either. Yeah. That's absolutely huge. Sitting on uh, damage. 20 AP. Blunk Keep stepping mode. up there as well yeah. when the two procs of the Echo Pass was on him. When that third proc gets hit and used from his basic attacks or his abilities, deals an extra ton of damage, as you saw. Yeah. Does, even exact without the uh, Trinity Force, deals an extra ton. Extra ton of damage. And Jizuki is just winning out these trades. Now, both of them will go through those Corrupting Potion stacks. Actually, one spare onto Blunk, but he's already used that summoner. We see Jizuki and Ruin taking the teleports once again, so it looks like Giants are going to go through a 1-3-1, one, one, a specialty of theirs. Uh, at the moment. And it's it's a bit of a struggle for Paris Saint-Germain. They're going to try and force many true backs and Jack Charles back, but this was a worry that we talked about in game one. Nardius and Noxiak not quite being up to the level of some of the other Challenge Series bot lanes. And although they got a little bit of an advantage last game when Kyrie came in for the gank, I don't think they've really proven, at least to me, that they are at a level where they can face up against some of these higher caliber opposition. Can we try to go for a little, little sneaky mid lane peekaboo, but couldn't really find anything. Jazuki is going to be able to use that E to get out of there, but taking a fair bit of damage. That's though. a lot of damage. Whoa, hang on a second. You wanted even in the bush, buddy. He was trying to get into the bush so he could then jump onto <laughs> Jazuki, but it's a long, long the way flash to go. Into the bush. And that's two summoners burnt looking towards mid lane, and. They don't know he burnt yeah. the flash, though. No, they had a ward in the bush. Unless that's just been placed. I'm pretty sure that was there. Oh, man. Oh, they know he flashed? Yeah, that's definitely, that's definitely been there for long enough. Yeah. They oh, knew yeah. he flashed. Oh. They will have pinged that out. They know the timer now. What was really interesting in that instance was the way Blanc played that. Normally, you'd see if uh, Kire was coming down from the bottom side brush near the dragon side, you'd see the mid laner play to the top side in order to make sure Jizuki rotates towards the bottom side, so you're you're at a diagonal with each other. You don't normally sit kind of parallel, you sit normally diagonal in the lane. And then it would be very, very easy for Kiri to kind of jump on him, and then Blank and Valkyrie in if need be. But in that instant, Blank actually rotated down, even though he was low on HP, because he knew Jizuki was very aggressive, and he's got that corrupting potion, so he wants to be. Having him then jumped on him, Kire blows the flash, leaves in, uh, well, tries to leap from the bush, and nothing really happens from there, because, again, Jizuki is going to be able to just face shift straight out. It's going to be a very, very big cooldown for him, especially he's here in that level six mark. It's going to be down for another three and a half minutes, roughly. Gilius, though, happy enough to kind of farm. Yeah, just farm himself up towards that level six mark. Lanes are pretty difficult to gank in, or honestly, White Knight's safe. Blunt could be very safe with the Valkyrie as well. Bot lane, Nardius and Noxiac just seem to be pushed back a lot of the time. Looks like Mini Troopax and Jack Charles will back away first. Now, last time we saw Mini Troopax getting the QSS after getting this BF sword, it was around the 8 to 10 minute mark. We'll have to see if he decides to itemize passively once again, especially since now he's got the Tarm Kench to devour him and keep him a little bit safer. Oh, hang on a second. Noxiac. I do, I do love that skin to Tom Kench. <laughs> It's absolutely fantastic. Holding the cutlery is great. Um, let's look at Giants and what they can kind of achieve off this, just this one win. If they manage to take this to a 2-0, they're wanting to prove to everybody that they can win against such a stacked roster of PSG. Again, we kind of talk about it and touch on it all the time, but you look at the individuals on the PSG lineup and you go, these are all very strong players. Obviously, that's had a lot of experience. Same with Blanc. But Giants coming through with such a such determination. Jizuki's very really low on mana here. He's got ult. He could ult right back now. Down Doesn't want to do anything. Only sitting at 130 mana, though. He'll ult back now when Blunk hits. Ooh. No, one more. That was close. Calculated, my uh, friend. He would have had to ult back if Blunk had flashed for the auto. That's very what I true. thought was going to happen, but he didn't do it. So. Would have uh, landed him in a bit of a sticky situation, though, as Blunk would have been right next to him at that point. The ultimate damage not doing it all too much with just a Doran's ring and a Dark Seal. Has picked up the Amp Tome, though. So again, we're seeing this uh, more common build from mid laners. We're seeing the Corrupting with Dark Seal and the Doran's Ring. That's a lot of lane focused stats. Gilius, though, trying to steal one of these red, uh, this red buff away. Kire knows it's happening, maybe. He does know it happens. There it's go. happening. The Ruin is going to just push him back. And this is the advantage of having a pushing top laner. Ruin is able to push White Knight in and then roam around and help Gilius out. 
Achilles can try and steal away some of the jungle. He actually gets some of this away. He's gonna flash oh. kick back straight into the waiting arms of Jizuki. Stan United comes in as well. Kaime not gonna survive for long enough. Blunt gets one. It's a one for one trade. Jungler for jungler as the mid laners get themselves on the board. It was jungler for jungler, but who got the kills? It was the mid lane. Jizuki burn flash there isn't gonna be all too big. There's a lot of mobility on that Echo. Kire going down there. That was a very, very slow kick flash as well from Gilius. Flashed in, waited a couple of seconds, like moseying around. He knows that Kire didn't have the flash from the earlier engagement. One of the massive problems when you blow flash that early is the Lee Sin, as soon as he hits six, you cannot escape his flash kick. Interestingly though, for Blanc, although Jizuki got the kill, and uh, it's actually now burnt his flash, Blanc actually has the red buff now as well. So he can actually harass down Jizuki quite a lot in this lane, and Jizuki's having to play very passively, just standing quite a long way back. Look at this once again from Gilius. Flash, kick, Stan United a little bit too late, you can see him. Oh, I thought that was going to come in, the Ooh. heel did come through from Blunk, just try and save him at the last possible second, but didn't happen, and at least Blunk was there to kind of clean up the pieces and take out Gilius in the return trade. Isn't going to be too much gained, but the big point and big question not, question, not really a question because it happened, but Blunk picking up the river before is pretty big. It's a little bit extra damage down onto that tier one turret in the mid, which again is going to be the most important one because opening up that map for a Corky and an Echo to roam is extremely, extremely useful for those days. I think the big question now for me is, Jaws, how much they use, how much Giants use this Tom Kench? Because his ability at level six to roam and to help out his team is actually incredibly monumental. And what you want to see from a good team is him coming for some early-ish ganks up towards top lane, up towards mid lane, trying to get behind the enemy. It's quite difficult because uh, they're hard lanes to gank. You know, Shen's quite difficult to gank, so is a Corky. But if Jack Charles can use him to good effect, they can actually start to extend a little bit of this lead that they have. Extending standing the lead is exactly what PSG are doing now. Noxiac taking this brush control is fairly important against someone like a Tom Kench being that Braum ever waiting. He's got the Ignite as well. We didn't actually pick up on that one earlier. Very aggressive laning phase. I mean, both of the giant bottom laners, the support and the Eddie Carrier like, are going to be massive targets for an all-in engage just because of Tom Kench's ability to devour the Caitlyn. Yeah. If you just take him out of the fight as, and just ignore Mini, it's not going to be too much of an issue because at least then Jack Troll can't save his AD carry. He's not going to want to devour him when he's getting taken down. Hence, I think why Noxiat took the ignite there. There we go. Jizuki Valkyrie comes in with the package. Damage. There's a power lock convergence. We'll shield him up for the time being. Lots of damage coming down from Blanc, as you say. Kaiwe pops the on the hunt. Very, very odd uses of the on the hunt there. Didn't even use it to get into the lane either. He's going to spot out Gilius, though. He knows exactly where he is. He's in the mid. Sure, good and. Job. Uh, so right, he used it to jump to the Krugs. Yeah, it's all good. It's very important. Kaime on this Rengar has not been impressing me across the last two weeks. Something that they keep picking up, even when things like Lee Sin are available. Um, although it was, it was uh, second after Lee Sin this time, but there was uh, still a few options in the jungle role. And going for the Rengar is something we used to see a lot when he was a lot stronger. Since then, been nerfed. Not as effective as he used to be, and I think we can see that coming out from Kaime. Now, PSG is setting up this four-man gank down towards the bottom side once again, uh -oh, and it Kyrie. looks like Giants are going to be slow to respond. There's the TP straight in, Blanc looking for Mini and Jackdaw, but he will have the thick skin. PSG now needs to back away because here comes the equalizer into Stand United. Going to get the chain of corruption down. That should be Blanc falling to ruin as he gets taken out. White Knights during the fray as well. It's a 5v5, but here comes the flank from Jizuki. Hasn't got the flash to jump in, but can phase dive straight onto Kaime. Two members of PSG fall. And Giants looking for a further collapse. Well coordinated turret dive there from PSG, but it's turned completely around. Giants maybe looking for a little else summing here. White Knight lagging behind the rest of his team. Convergence, Abyssal, Abyssal Voyage brings in two uh -oh, mini there as low. well. Not yes, Jack Troll <laughs> so low, gets ignited by Noxiac. However, White Knight still underneath the tower by himself. Kick back, knock down. The Spirit's Refuge will only save him for so long. Four kills to one in favor of Giants. I think that Pistol Voyage is a little bit aggressive. With nah, no it's HP, fine. But it's fine, man. They still got the kill onto White Knight, which is the most important thing there. They're probably going to be able to secure this first tier one turret in the bottom lane. That's going to open the map up. They can now put Jizuki in the bottom side. They can put Ruin in the bottom side. More, more or less, more, no, more often than not, you're going to want to put Ruin against White Knight regardless. So just kind of swap them around isn't going to be too much of a problem. Put Jizuki in a side A now, and now you have Mini in the mid. This is going to be so, so important for him. There's the second item QSS once again. Gets it alongside the Zerka's Greaves. Jizuki's going to back as well, complete his proto belt. He's now 3 and 0 oh on this Echo. I just don't see how you deal with him and with Ruin still 
able to split push. And what did we say before? Who gets ahead early in the mid lane is going to actually decide this middle stage of the game because now, what can Blunk do? Nothing. Exactly. The problem with that, doing nothing isn't going to help your team at all. And Jazuki now can roam. It's going to be very, very easy for him to find um, to find roams and ganks off just because that tier one turret is down. You now see him in the bottom lane, like I mentioned. They're actually putting Mini up in the top side, which is uh, a little bit interesting to me. You kind of, I would have thought they'd put him in the mid lane and then push out that tier one turret and then take priority control over this dragon. Yes, it's only a cloud trick, but That's probably it's why. still going to help them. There is I a mean, Rift held on the top side now. That's yeah, the thing. which is like, what I was going to say. Yeah. So Rift, if there was a Mountain Drake or an Infernal, you'd do that. But just because it's a cloud, eh, really. And uh, Harriet the Herald is going to be there for the taking in a minute. And now you can see Jazuki with pure control over Blunt. Holy oh my goodness. Moly. That damage. And the thing is, these sort of equal trades, it's always in favor of Jazuki because he can always use that Chrono Break to get himself back. Actually, a kick comes out from Gilius and he misses the Q. That's the Gilius we know and Blunt love. There's stunned. the jump in with the parallel convergence. Time Winder as well. Won't quite get the kill though. Here comes Kyrie right. with the thrill of the hunt. We'll get knocked up by Gilius as well. The Sonic Wave comes in, going to chase in a little bit more. Battle Roar as Noxiak eventually joins the fight. Six stacks, by the way, for Jazuki on his Dark Seal. Oh, baby. Oh, here we go. Let's get that Magi's on the go. Please don't. Please don't. Please. Please. I, I love seeing Magi's, especially in competitive. It never works, though, unless you're someone like Faker. I don't see why you, you love seeing Magi's in competitive. A lot of AP. It's a show-off item, isn't it? It's like Sword of the Occult. Oh, Rest in peace. oh no. Twitch with Sword of the Occult, oh, Twitch man. wasn't broken. It's yeah. just amazing. But yep, has got that 18 extra AP, of course, from that Dark Seal for the time being. Looks like he might be going... Oh, he's got himself a Sapphire Crystal next as well, so there's a bunch of different options for him there, depending on uh, how he wants to build. Giants will go for the Mountain Drake, uh, the ocean, the Cloud Drake. Mount, it's an mountain, ocean, ocean. mountain Ocean Cloud Drake. <laughs> it's an Ocean up next, and Rift Herald's still on the cards for them if they want it. Across the board, they have taken a 2,000 gold lead, only 15 minutes into this game, and if you look at items, First item completed on a lot of the Giants members. Proto Belt for Jazuki, Leandries for Ruin, Quicksilver Sash apparently for Mini True Packs, because you need that when you've got a Tarm Kench on your team. Nardius is going towards the Blade of the Ruin King, and Blunk has skipped the Hex Drinker this time and is going straight towards that Trinity Force. Okay, you say you need, you don't need it. Well, you, you need it, but kind of sarcastically. I said it very sarcastically, yes. um, Very sarcastically. But it does leave Jack Troll to kind of devour someone else. And if... Who are you going to devour? You're going to devour Jazuki, Gilius, Ruin. Oh, yeah, because Jazuki doesn't have enough trouble. mobility himself. Gilius doesn't have enough hey. mobility himself. And Ruin needs to get so <laughs> close to the fight to use his equalizer. I'm sorry. I totally forgot about Trying that, Trying to Jules. justify the pick. It's a bad itemization <laughs> choice. So let's just leave it at that. I, I understand why you want to get it later in the game, but you're no longer really playing a pure 2v2 laning phase. The map has opened up a huge amount. I think you could have quite easily gone for the BF sword into Zeal item and just gone from there. You are now letting your support run because that's what Tom Genji does best, so you're actually alone in that lane. So yeah. in that regard... Yeah. Okay, yeah, I'll, 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 I'll stick with you there, George. We'll Thank give him you. the benefit of the doubt. The benefit of the doubt. I think it's exactly. a mighty benefit to give him. Now let's look at other power spikes that have just been hit as well. Let's look at Ruin. Now sitting on that lane, Andrew's Torment has got the Merc Treads as well. Nice itemization from him. And now White Knight's itemization, in contrast, stark contrast to last game, where he's dealing with a heavy AD threat, having to invest extremely heavily in MR. 1 0 3 on the Rumble. We mentioned how much of a bad matchup it is for White Knight. Jazuki and Blunk tussling it out still. Jazuki could kill him here, actually. Clearly, yes. Chrono Break back, but Blunk dodges it. White Knight tries to get the taunt off. Can't quite land it. Jazuki's going to jump himself back away. Here comes the Voyage. Abyssal Voyage. And Mini Trupax joins the fray. Kiro once again, following that ultimate. Not really finding all too much. He's using it more of a distraction tool, saying, guys, I'm here. You know, I'm off to the sidelines. Using it badly, I believe, yeah. as the uh, You expression. don't know where I am. Yeah, but I'm but still here. He's not using it effectively at all, and I completely agree. It's why I'm disappointed in, in the Rengar pick as well, because he just hasn't been effective on it. He hasn't been making the plays that you, you would want from a Rengar. And when your first couple of Thrill of the Hunts don't do anything, you really fall off as it gets later on into the game. You can't make those assassinations. It's a bit like Twisted Fate, you know? If your first Destiny fails, or if your first two Destinies fail, nine times out of ten, you're not going to have a productive game. One pick I'd actually like to see him pick up it's something that Mujin played last week. It is the Olaf. Yes, I totally agree. Olaf has the ability to run through literally everything 
That is on the Giants roster right now. The slow from Rumble, the slow from Lee Sin, the kick from Lee Sin. Carry in trouble. Yeah, has to try and flash the wall. Glacial Fisher comes out and they will keep him alive for the time being. Paris Saint Germain doing good damage control at least at the moment. Nice change of corruption actually. Stunning up Gilius and Jack Troll. So they weren't able to recommence that fight. But yeah, Olaf. You run through the st you run through Lee kick. He's probably not going to kick an Olaf anyway. But you run through the stuns and the slows. Literally everything that Giants has on their roster that's there to protect Mini, not necessarily Jizuki or Ruin because of their upfront damage and their ability to like get on the back line regardless. You have an Olaf running at Giants, and then you follow up with a Shen, who can then stand United on top of him. He's going to be in the back line already. He gets more survivability from that, and you deliver the Shen as well to Mini, who can taunt. If not Mini, he can talk Gilius up. He can talk Ruin up as well. So I think that would have been a better pick for him. And like you mentioned, not doing or having an impact at all in the start of this game has just kind of led to kind of a questionable jungle pick. Maybe it's a comfort pick for him. Maybe he decides, you know what? We're in game number two. I need to sit on something more comfortable in order to kind of bring back this to at least a draw. And they definitely need that draw because otherwise they will be going into week three as zero two competitors. The only people who could match them would be, uh, who War. is it? Oh, War, that's the one who actually, I think from all, all people's perspectives, we'll probably match them in the next game against RB. But War do have their full roster today and can look to challenge a little bit more. Giants very much at the top of the pile as they continue just to push it back to PSG. A 2,000 gold lead for them. The Cloud Drake in their back pocket as well. Ocean Drake spawning next. Rift Herald still on the map, but doesn't look like anyone is going to go for the Herald this game. Well, so let's hop back to game number one. And we look at the gold lead and the gold advantage that Giants had over PSG. At some points in the game, in around 20 minutes, it was about 700 gold. Now it's 2,000. Yep. Four and one, they've got a dragon, they've got a turret. The most important scenario, uh, the most important thing about Giants having that uh, turret lead. Hang on, Abyssal Voyage though. Uh-oh, Kirei. Standing United's going to come in. They're all going to try and jump onto Mini. Kirei takes a pilt over Peacemaker to the back and actually they will just retreat. They did have to use the Stand United, but Paris Saint-Germain able to counter the gank up towards the top side. So a few big ultimates and a few big cooldowns there used by PSG. Gilius now just trying to force something in the mid lane with Ruin. Two teleports on the side of Giants right now. They can really start pressuring this mid-tier one and as soon as that opens up as well, it's going to be a disaster for PSG. As we mentioned, one of their weaknesses in game number one was the fact they couldn't get a lot of that vision and maintain that vision. Because you can use the ultimate there just to get a little bit of health back. He knows Blunk has a lot of damage in his kit finishing that 20 force. Chizuki is going towards a Lich Bane of his own, so it will be Sheen for Sheen in that matchup. Mini Truebacks played that incredibly safe up towards the top side. Actually burnt both Flash and Heal to try and get away. He still even has that QSS, wasn't even used. So I still, I still wonder about this itemization choice. I, I understand why he does it, but I feel that sometimes he's just a little bit too safe as an AD carry. Because if, if there he'd stood and fought a little bit more, I think perhaps they could have traded back onto, onto Kyrie and onto Blank, perhaps slightly more effectively. But it's working for Giants at the moment. I should, shouldn't doubt them. They are in the top spot of the league, and if they win this, they will keep that at least for one week more. Looking for that mid lane tower as Noxiak puts the Unbreakable down to try and block up the damage. Giants won't quite able to be able or won't quite be able to break through that turret line yet. You gotta say he wants to protect that perfect KDA that he still maintains. Didn't die last game, didn't die in the two games last week. Does remind me of that account over in Korea. That full tank LeBlanc account that only builds tank, super safe, perfect KDA. Probably Who like is a that? super negative win rate. It's probably in like bronze or silver or something. Okay, but cool. Absolutely Vanda. ridiculous account. Reminds me of Vanda. He almost okay. went unkilled throughout the entire split last split as well. Uh, which was very impressive. Schalke were dominant last year, obviously. Yeah. But Blanc does have the package up towards the top side, and it looks like PSG are going to react to it. They all come up towards this top lane tower. No vision again coming out from Giants, but we said in the first game that it's very easy for them to kind of walk in. But the main issue I think we got to touch on is the fact, yes, Kire hasn't done anything massively impactful, but at least this time he's actually controlling a lot of this vision with the help of Noxiac around this Baron. Look how many wards they have. They have two bushes where they have a control ward and a normal ward. They've got a ward in the little pixel brush and they've got a pink ward up to the side here as well. No Rift Herald either has been taken in these past two games. And even with that Ocean Drake going down, they're going, okay, whatever, it's an Ocean Drake, that's fine. We'll just deal with it when it comes to an Elder. Jack Troll now just trying to clear out some of that vision, but 
That's a good seven hits you have to take out of the, both those wards. Blunk, though, is very low in the top side. We'll get pushed out, actually, by Dazuki once more. And this is the dueling potential we talked about. It's going to exactly. be very easy for now, Dazuki now to duel out Blunk. Now that he's got the Lich Bane as well, the split push take potential is just absolutely huge. A couple of shots on this tower, that's going to fall, and it means that PSG lose the ability to gain vision in the river. You see Giants react to it. They say, OK, yeah, well, you can have vision for a little bit. We'll chunk out Blanc and then get the tower. Gilius can push forward, get some vision control of his own, and it makes it so hard for PSG to actually react. The cleansing of the wards has begun. Yes. Giants now. Just like Treants. Yeah. Treants falling in Fangorn Forest. Exactly. Wards falling in the river. Wards unleash falling in the river. The river. <laughs> unleash the, the wards. Yeah. Giants have unleashed the river in that top side. Can go for the Baron if they want. Don't really want to do it just quite yet. Don't have the damage across the board. But once again, a, a methodical game from Giants. And they pushed PSG back. They cleared out that first line of turrets, just mid lane to take. And it looks like they should be able to get that right now. Blanc damage. Gets harassed out with that Proto Belt. Jazuki still has the Chrono Breaks to jump back if he wants it. And Blanc just continually forced away. They can't quite get this mid lane tower because Noxiac continually just putting up that unbreakable shield. But eventually it will fall and Giants once again, have enacted the 1-3-1, one, one, and Paris Saint-Germain just don't seem to have the tools in their arsenal to respond. Yeah, I mean, he's still sitting at that 10 CS a minute mark, 100, uh, 238. There'll be a few more now at 23 minutes. Blunk, though, getting very aggressive on Jazuki. Has got ultimate available to him still. Blunk's going to have to be very careful. He might have to use it here. He's going to jump yeah. all the way back with go. the time wider flashes in. Jazuki looking for it, but can't. Quite get the damage down now. Jack Shaw's a genius him. there. Blanc gonna get the Stanley Knighted on him. They're still looking for Jazuki. He gets the Proto Bell back up. White Knight's joined the fray. There's the Valkyrie forward. One more also oh. on Jazuki. Phosphorus Bomb takes him out. Double now time. it's up to White Knight to try and distract from Blanc, who does get caught out. The flash in from Gilius. That's the kill. Here comes the Equalizer as well as the TP has joined the fray from Ruin. The Chain of Corruption comes out, eaten up by Jack Troll to distract them from the fight. Gilius jumps all the way back in and jumps out as well. White Knight with the taunt. Look at this mini. True Pax has been untouched. He's only just joined the fight. Now he can continue to wail away on this Paris Saint-Germain lineup. They're going to look for the chase. Jack Troll with the lick just needs to land it on one. That's another dead carry if they can oh, get yes, there. Kieran. The kick lands. Giants going to clean this one up. Four kills to one in favor of Giants. What was that team fight? PSG. They were extended. Blanc just uh, Chasing Jazuki maybe a little bit too far. Jack Troll came with the Abyssal Voyage. Delivering Gilius to the back line. Now Giants go, you know what? Baron's on the cards. Three members of yours dead. First Baron of the series. Paris Saint-Germain tried to make a play. We have to give them that, but Giants reacted quicker. Jazuki's going to look for Noxiac. Timewinders jump oh. out. Easy peasy, lemon squeeze it. That's the Baron. 25 minutes in, nine kills to two for Giants. They have two dragons in their pocket. They've got two towers. And they have a 7,000 gold lead. I was about to say as well, that last team fight did not go in Giants' way, but they completely turned it around. It was a bit disconjointed, I think, from both sides. You saw Ruin in the middle of four members of PSG. Didn't go down. Yeah. Why is that? Zonyas, that's why. Zonyas used the ult. Very, very easy then for Gilius to kind of bait out a couple of summoners, just diving in and diving straight yeah. back. Jack Troll was there as well with the Devour. Exactly. It was extremely hard for any of PSG to really to lock down one member. Remember, there's a oh, lot of control. Nardius. Nardius is in trouble. You are dead, my son. Not much more you can say about that, really. It's too easy for Chizuki. If Blanc's not the one there to deal with him, he can just trade in. They're going to get a tower down towards this bottom side as well. Mid lane tower falls, and this is just Giants accelerating. They've got Baron, they've got three lanes pushing, and it looks like Paris Saint-Germain just don't have a hope to deal with this Giants push. No, they do not. Still unkilled is Mini. Now sieging down this inhibitor turret in that bottom lane. White Knight trying to do something here, but without the Varus, without Blanc in that lane, it's extremely hard for them to clear waves. They've got Kire. Great, he can walk up to the wave. What's going to happen? He's going to die. Blanc maybe looking for a little play here. Does a package. But Jazuki, meanwhile, in that top side, like I said, split pushing Echo with this Lich Bane. It's extremely hard for actually PSG to react in the slightest. Yeah, there is the tower falling up towards the top side. It's now a 10,000 gold lead for Giants as they look for another tower. It They're continues to extend 11,000 with the inhib on the dinner plate for them as well. They will chow down as Mini Trupax just tries to take Here it we go. out. Here's Here Kaiwei with the, the thrill of the hunt for Mini. There's a, there's a ward there, Kaiwei. He gets oh. spotted out. Mini Trupax absolutely shreds through that front line and there's the inhibitor falling as well. Giants just dominating 26 minutes in they look absolutely unstoppable unkillable undefeatable unfatigable they are just invincible and clean why not go for the engage though just get the double taunt 
And here it comes Rune with the Zonyas. Noxiac has to get the Stand United on him as Jizuki jumps on towards Kairi. PSG with the last hope, with the last stand, with the Chain of Corruption, perhaps the last ultimate use from Nardias in this series. Jack Troll keeps Ruin alive and the Inhibitor Tower will fall as well up towards this top side. It's just impossible for Paris Saint-Germain to do anything about this giant squad. A disconjointed team fight yet again. What happened there? We saw White Knight. He dashes in, gets two man. That's fantastic. Rest of the team, guys, follow up. I need you to follow up right now. Nah, Noxiac jumps in. I'm good, fam. Good. A, almost 100 to zero. Stand United from White Knight and just time and time again, they're going in one, two members at a time on a Giants roster that has a lot of AOE damage coming out from Ruin. And it's going to be extremely hard for them to actually get on the back line of Mini just because Jack Troll is there. We're seeing the power of Tom Kench rear its head once more. Whether you like it or you don't, it is there. And it is very, very strong. A lot of people doubt it. This Giants lineup, they, when they when we saw it before Challenger Series, they said, "Yep, you know, middle of the pack at best, maybe maybe even bottom of the pack." Gilius has not always performed as well as he'd like to on Shalko and UOL didn't have the best of performances, but even after coming back across from uh, from across the pond from NA, he's played pretty well this series. Jazuki as well used to call himself the Italian God, but he's been playing like it this series, four and one on that Echo. Kaime once again with a thrill of the hunt Kairi. looking for the jump on towards Jack Troll. There's the equalizer. Nardius is going to burn down. White Knight has to flash away. Here comes Jizuki and that's going to be a kill. White Knight falls as does Blanc. Abyssal Voyage coming in from Jack Troll. This is just the end for Paris Saint-Germain. There's not much they can do at all. Nardius gets chunked with the oh time winder. Jizuki goodness. gets the kill. Oh, that's the, the double, double for the Echo. Mini Trupax helping out as well with a couple of autos. Giants are going to take down the Nexus Towers and they will take the series. They go top of the table 2-0 over Paris Saint-Germain. You want to engage on us? That's completely fine because we've got Ruin. We'll split your entire team up with that equalizer. And guess who is left on the other side? That was one dead Shen. It was 